My name is Kevin Callahan. I'm the author of Accessorizer. This is um, installment number two in Accessorizer Made Simple or Simpler, and it's covering the uh, Mac OS X services um, functionality, its operating system feature that allows um, Xcode to send text over to Accessorizer, allows Accessorizer to service that text or your code and then send it back um, to Xcode. So um, I'm also going to discuss two new powerful, or as of about 2.9.2, .2, powerful features, the action menu and the action panel, which I know that there are a bunch of um, accessorizer users over the past years that are still using the old workflow, um, but I encourage you all to take a look at the action menu and the action panel because I think you're going to find it's even faster than before and it's uh, much more streamlined. So I know it's hard to um, teach an old dog new tricks, but it, you may want to take check this out. So to get services up and running, you need to open up your system preferences. Pre system preferences, go to keyboard, select keyboard shortcuts, go to services, and then scroll to find the text selection area. And in here, you're going to see a bunch of accessorizer services that are registered um, as offerings by accessorizer to service text that's being passed to it. Um, I have them all turned off right now because in the past where I may have all a bunch of these are like 28 of them or something here. Um, services turned on with varying shortcuts. Um, Xcode 4 now uses up pretty much all of those shortcuts in, in its own interface, which renders these shortcuts unavailable when you're working with an Xcode. So what I've done is I've implemented a single point of entry service, the Accessorizer Action Panel Service. I'm going to turn that one on, and I'm going to define it with a keyboard shortcut that is currently not being used by Xcode 4. Now this is a little bit of a handful, but for guitarists it's not so bad. Shift Option Command 0. And um, other, other um, if you don't want to use something that's as, um, as kind of a combination of four keys there, you may be able to disable one of your Xcode 4 or Xcode 3 shortcuts and then uh, use that instead. But you're going to probably want to define a shortcut for this so you can keep your fingers on the keyboard. You can always access a service from a menu, but it makes it easier when you define a keyboard shortcut. Now this keyboard, this service, you're going to say, well, what about all these other services for all these other code generation options? How am I going to get all my other code just with one service? Because accessories are now, you can default this action right here, this one service invocation to either declaration or implementation or both. And then through the action panel and the action menu, depending on which one you like to use, you can invoke all these other actions independent. You don't need to memorize a bunch of different services or navigate and all that. And you'll see it's a visual um, a menu that is also keyboard driven. So you don't have to memorize keyboard strokes, but you can get what you want. And you're also reminded of what accessorizer can generate for you. Okay, so that's set up. Now the other area you want to look at is the journal tab here. Um, just before we get started, you can click on this help um, button. You'll have a you have your, uh, some text in here to set that up if you ever forget what, what's going on here. You've got options between Xcode and TextMate. I've got Xcode turned on. I'm going to activate the editor after a service um, or an action panel um, completes. That means that if I'm either invoking a service or if I'm using the action menu or action panel, it's going to reactivate Xcode. Um, let's hope that works. It may take one or two times to get it primed, and after that it should be fine. Um, and then I've got these things turned on for now. Um, I'm going to launch that. You can see the action panel. And I'm going to first generate with this stuff, with the action panel that you see here, which um, you can scroll up and change transparency. In fact, I'm just going to scroll it up and kind of stick that right, stick it right there. Um, and my default right now is set for declaration action. So whenever I invoke that accessorizer action panel service, it's also going to generate this particular code generation right away, so I can just paste in the results. I don't have to go select it from the menu the first time. So um, let's just minimize accessories of the dock. It's usually the best way to do it once you have your settings done. And let's go to the interface file. And I've already written out some uh, IVARs so I can make this a little bit faster. Now I'm going to select my... Um, first, actually, I'm going to not select my code and show you what happens if you forget to select your code first. There are no services that apply, and that's because the services in Mac OS X require some selection of an object. In this case, working with text, select your text, 
or you can double click here or you can actually just select you know, a few whatever you're working with I'm going to take these guys now I've defined my service as shift option command 0 so if I do that Xcode was reactivated as you can see but the panel came up now it's a little bit transparent I've set that transparency that way now I have to, if I were to paste right now I don't even have to select anything from here because my declaration services automatically have generated by default given my settings I don't want to paste right now because I'll end up pasting over my IVARs. I do want to move my insertion point and then command V to paste. I get all my settings are observed um, and that's going to be in one of the other videos we'll talk in detail about that. But all my settings is observed. Now I can go to my implementation file and I want to insert my synthesized statements. At this point Xcode is activated. I can just click on, if I use, want to use my mouse, I can click on my implementation and tapping that. Notice that I did tap my panel but Xcode remained active. That's because I'm reactivating every time um, Xcode after the generation. If I want to go do my dialic, I can insert my cursor here and again I can go click on tap on dialic. Now let's let's do um, the let's work on the action menu because some people may not want to have the panel and have to reach over. You can navigate that with a keyboard, by the way, too. We have to command tab back and forth. We can leave this up here, and this will um, unfold as needed. Um, but I'm going to um, close that panel, and I'm going to just disable that uh, panel and you go completely by keyboard shortcut alone, which means I'm going to use the action menu in the status bar. Now, it's very important to understand that the, that if you, you can reach up here and invoke that action status bar, the action panel uh, or action menu in the status bar here, and these are all keyboard driven, assigned by these characters or letters. But if you want a global hot key in order to um, open up that menu without having to reach up there, I've defined that and it's hardwired to a global hot key of Shift Control Command Zero. So it's one keyboard, uh, one keystroke different. Um, shift control command zero for the global key um, hotkey. Now that's not, uh, you can't set that on your own right now, but that's uh, hardwired. You have to have universal access, enable access for assistive devices turned on. All right, enable access for assistive devices turned on. That allows the system to recognize. Um, um, the uh, system, uh, excuse me, the, the shortcut, global shortcut. So let's go back over to, I'm going to, we'll start again with the property. So uh, again, uh, let's say I'm starting from scratch. I have to get these guys over to Accessorizer. Now, to do that, I do Shift, Option, Command, Zero for my service. Accessor uh, Xcode is activated. I move my insertion point. Now, at this point, I'm going to use the global hotkey I just discussed, Shift Control Command Zero to bring it on my, my my menu. I can reach up and tap one of those guys, or I can just use the, the keyboard shortcut, which is number one. Now, again, I didn't have to do that in this first time because we've already defined the the default action to be a declaration. So I could have just just pasted at that point. Um, now, when I go over to my implementation file, I want to do my my uh, synthesize. I can bring up that. Again, I'm going to do number two, go to D, you know, dialic, bring it up, do number four. Now, um, if I want to do uh, view to download, I can go to my view to download, bring it up, and that's number nine. If I want to do key to archiving, bring it up, um, that's, let's see, key to archiving, eight. If I wanted to do, um, let's see, description for keys, oh, that's number nine. Uh, five, and you get all these the keys and all the observation stuff. So that's how you can use the. Um, so there's just basically once you learn that Shift Control Command Zero shortcut, you're going to be using it all the time, and then you just select, and you'll start memorizing some of your other shortcuts too. But this minimizes the number of keyboard shortcuts to memorize when using with Accessorizer. Basically, you just have two to really memorize, and then you can always visually see um, from the menu what options what you need. Uh, the advantage of the action menu with the action panel is that it does remind you of some of the other code generation. A lot of people don't realize, you know, that the accessorizer does more than just um, synthesizing properties, and you get 
case renums, KVO, singleton. You can wrap your selectors. You can create prototype stubs and delegate stubs. You can override your setters and getters right here. You've got init methods. Um, there's just a lot of stuff going on. Constants for properties and strings. Um, you can get all your collection accesses for a mutable array and a, and a set, key validation, and all that kind of stuff. So um, the, the action panel and the action menu combined with the single point of entry action, action panel, um, the, excuse me, accessorized action panel service provides a single point of entry, makes it really simple, only two keyboards, uh, shortcuts to memorize, and then you're good to go. Okay, hopefully that helps. In the next installment, you'll, I'm going to show you more in detail about the, uh, the coding styles and how that works. Thank you.